Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. Came across a bunch of parts that uh, was trying to decide what what do I need to sell, and it's time to get rid of a bunch of a bunch of things. And one of those was uh, a large box of air variable capacitors and some inductors from various linear amplifiers that I'd built over the years and other devices. And I decided I would build a manual antenna tuner. I wanted to do a couple things. First of all, refresh my memory on how they work and what the parameters should be. But also, I wanted to know if there's loss through that tuner, and if so, how much. And we'll research a lot of that right after this break. Before I go any further, uh, speaking of loss, I was setting up the uh, the tuner, uh, doing the video. I've got cameras going, and I'm uh, doing a screen grab of uh, the LP100A watt meter. I tested the uh, uh, antenna tuner a couple times, and I keyed it again, and the LED lights in the room went to black off. The um, big display screen behind me, at uh, the monitor, it went black. Um, other things in the room were making funny noises every time I would key into the tuner. What it turned out to be was a loose coax connector and only a quarter of a turn to half a turn loose. I started backtracking all the things that I had connected and I got to those connectors in the back and one of them was just slightly loose. As soon as I cinched it down, finger tight, not with a wrench, uh, all those interference issues went away and the thing operated properly. Um, speaking of the thing, let's take a look at the schematic that I drew and we'll go through the various um, components, which is not many. There's only a few connections inside the thing, except I did forget one. Um, so let's look at that now. Here is my best and but not very good schematic of a manual antenna tuner that's designed for uh, high power by that i mean uh more than two kilowatts not more than probably would do more than three maybe four there's a reason for that i don't want stuff to arc on the inside if it's faced with a really high uh, uh, mismatch so i built a huge margin of safety into the antenna tuner so here we go Here's um, the schematic of that uh, homebrew manual antenna tuner. All right, here's the schematic that I drew. It's an antenna tuner, sort of T-type. Here's an SO239 and an SO239. The um, outer part of it is at chassis ground. The center pin, the receptacle part, connects to a capacitor on both sides. It's sort of the mirror image. And then where the two capacitors meet, uh, there's a roller inductor down to chassis ground. The unused turns on the roller inductor are shorted, um, trying to keep circulating currents from going below that tap point because it could damage the, uh, the tuner. So it really is just that simple. There's one, two, three, four, five connections. Now, there's one crucial part that I didn't put in. I've got to go back and add. I didn't put in a way to bypass this whole thing. So I'm going to add uh, one of these um, vacuum relays like this guy. And they're small. Uh, it's good for 10 amps. Um, I think that'll work I squared R. So it, it should be good for four or five kilowatts. But what it'll do, it'll short this SO239 to this one. And they're relatively close together. And so that's um, that's what um, I forgot. And a switch on the front panel to bypass this whole thing. Uh, as far as pictures go, out of focus picture of the front panel. Again, it was cut out of um, a, uh, a computer side panel. And I drilled a few holes and mounted a turns counter. Um, 
Here's what it looks like on the inside, the two uh, 400 picofarad, 4 kV plus or minus capacitors and a roller inductor. Uh, edge wound, silver plated. There's another view of the inside. Uh, you can see the, um, uh, the turns counting dial. I ran out of set screws, so I've got to get some more of those. And the uh, uh, shaft insulators, uh, because these both of these capacitors stay above ground. Here's another picture of the outside, sort of the finished product. A big black box. Here's a little better picture with it in focus. Um, I didn't have a way to do a dial marking, so I've got to figure that out. The rear panel has two SO239s, and the vacuum relay is going to mount right between these two and short out those connectors. I did put in um, insulators below the two air variables to keep them above chassis. And also the shaft is insulated. I used feed throughs to run to the two SO239s that are below the chassis. Those are some that I happen to have on hand that are ancient. Um, I used flat uh, silver plated strap. Here the two capacitors uh, meet and the coil goes to ground. Okay, so here's what I did next to test the antenna tuner. Using the LP100A virtual control panel, I put uh, various power levels into it, many times just a few watts, and attempted to tune um, the 20 meter Yagi on other bands. In other words, the SWR would be super high just to see if I could make it uh, get to a one-to-one -one SWR, knowing that the, the feed line losses will be huge and really that won't work, but just as a test. So for example, here I'm running like 100 watts and adjusting the roller inductor, and I'm able to get it to a one-to-one -one SWR or darn close to it. Uh, and then I went off to other bands and did that same procedure again and again. A couple of issues came up. One is that the um, uh, air variable capacitors, I don't have gear reduction or vernier tuning, and as a result, it's a bit touchy. Uh, two, the roller inductor uh, requires a little bit of care in that I don't want to be pouring full power into it. I want to set the roller inductor in its what ultimately will be its proper position. But what I found was, uh, let's say I tune the roller inductor and I get the lowest SWR and I adjust the two capacitors. I find I have to detune the roller inductor, watch the SWR go up, and then retune the capacitors again. And then I can come up with even a lower SWR. Sometimes it requires more inductance, other times less. So using the roller inductor turned out to be a bit tricky. And as you can see on here, I'm maneuvering and I get to a one-to-one -one SWR with uh, just a couple of watts and then later go to uh, just the exciter at um, 25, 30 watts and then a small amplifier after that. And that's another issue with a solid state amp. It tends to throttle back power. So you have to really look just at the SWR and not the output power because the output power varies based upon the SWR. So it can go up and down um, and the SWR then becomes the key to tuning this thing. But anyway, I was able to get the uh, antenna tuner to using the four, uh, three element Yagi to match on 10, 15, 20, and 40, and with some difficulty on 80. Uh, I'm not saying it's a good idea. I just needed a huge miss. <laughs> mismatch to see if I could get the antenna tuner to tune. I did. Again, it requires uh, some really careful uh, watching of the SWR meter and then making note of the position of the loading coil as at least a starting point the next time I need to tune the thing. Uh, so anyway, I got, as you can see, a one-to-one -one SWR. Let's look at um, 
Let's go to DX Engineering uh, and Palstar and just take a quick look to see what it would cost if I were buying the parts new. And let's do Palstar first. So um, get that up on the screen. Here are their turns counting dials, and they're roughly $80. Uh, the capacitors, uh, the ones that I used are, um, I guess they are 500. I thought they were 400. Well, I see uh, 23 to 430 picofarads, 150 bucks a piece, so it'd be $300. Uh, roller inductor, inductors, there we go. Um, Another 140, so that's 300, 450. Um, turns counter, another 80, 530. A box, at least 100 bucks, 600. And you can buy, let's go to DX Engineering, you can buy the complete. And we'll go to the Palstar one and see how much that is. I looked at it some time ago. And uh, where is it? It's down the page a bit. Okay, here we go. Palstar 8D4K, 2500 watt antenna tuner. It's 1400 bucks, And uh, it's got a built-in watt meter. Pretty much the same kind of components that I was using. Uh, it is set up for a balanced feed line. You can buy the thing already made for fourteen hundred bucks, or you can build it yourself for about eight hundred. So, in my view, it's better just to go ahead and buy this. It's <clears throat> it's a beautiful product. Um, Paul makes some excellent devices, so here you go. All right, that's my uh, uh, antenna tuner, such as it is, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I've got uh, a part two coming up on on this device as I test it out. I've got to add that relay. I'd like to put a watt meter in it, but there's no space for that. And I may add a, a Torette at the back and go to a, a four to one uh, balance. So uh, from unbalanced to balanced and out the back end through two feet through. Thanks for watching. I'm Jim W6LG in Rockland, California, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, uh, please do that. And if you'd like to contribute, uh, Patreon is.